In today's episode, I visit Le Touquet to explore England's training base. It's not as quiet as you might think. I watch Uruguay and Namibia and Japan Samoa and take a dip in the English Channel oh, it's cold. before watching New Zealand dismantle Italy. My name's Tim Tunnicliffe, host of the Amateur Rugby Podcast, and I'm here in France to show you the entirety of the Rugby World Cup. I'll be travelling the country, hitting the fan zones, showing you the in-stadium experience and getting the lowdown from all the talking points from what is sure to be an epic World Cup. Yesterday, I did some maintenance work on the van, went for a run around a lake, took in the sights of Lille and tested out four of its sports bars as I watched Scotland versus Tonga and Australia versus Wales, and I ended up a little bit drunk. I might yet, might, I might yet go and try and find this Aussie bar. Welcome back to the Rugby World Cup daily vlogs and welcome to the beaches of Dunkirk where I spent the last three days just relaxing after Lille. I watched Uruguay versus Namibia in a bar just along the way there last night. Cracking game that was, as often can be the case in these World Cup games where teams are battling out at about the same sort of level, but they're not the headliners. Namibia started strong, but Uruguay came right back into it and flew through. But it was tight, and then Namibia kind of committed rugby suicide by getting two yellow cards in, in a minute, one of which turned into a red. So... That was game over then, really. I've just made myself a delicious egg and chorizo wrap to fill me up because we're heading off today. Heading off to La Touquet. La Touquet. La Touquet. I wonder what Touquet means. I might have to look that up before we get there. For those of you who support England rugby, you'll know why I'm headed there. So, yeah, it's going to be a good, uh, good couple of days. Try and see why England rugby have based themselves there. So... Let's hit the road. Welcome to La Touquet, England's training base for this entire Rugby World Cup. As you can see on the roundabout here behind, they've got all their team jerseys put up. Massive rugby ball over here with roses surrounding it. And I thought I'd come and have a look. Took on the hangout here and see why England chose this place for their training base. First impressions, um, massive shock. It's lovely. God, it's so like green, leafy, beautiful buildings. Look at this one over here. Just big, wide promenades. I think I'll be quite happy to stay here for seven weeks with little, you know, weekend trips down to the south coast to play rugby every now and again. First point of order for today, though, is to find a bar to watch tonight's game. A quick walk down the high street here, and I'm starting to get a feel for this place. I feel young here, very young. I don't think I've seen another person that I could guarantee is younger than me. Maybe that's part of the reason why they camp here in La Touquet. I know the lads are all very professional nowadays, but they did fancy going out and finding a bit of a bit of action, a bit of a bit of fun. I don't think they're really gonna find it here. It's not gonna stop me trying that. <laughs> the other thing I've noticed is this is a golf town. I don't think too many people know or care too much about rugby here. Based on the informational boards that have been put up around town, detailing how the game started, some of its great players, that could be another real benefit. The lads can just walk around this town and know that they're not gonna get bothered on a, on a constant basis. Okay, Japan versus Samoa in Le Globe, the Le Globe Trotter. Le Globe Trotter, that's hard to say. Le Globe, Le Globe, Le Globe Trotter. And I've got the best seat in the house. Half time, 17-8 to Japan. Can't help but feel Samoa have been a little hard done by in this half. Two tries, both with question marks over them. A yellow card, which was near. And, well, Japan have got a yellow card, which might well turn into a red. Samoa got the try right late on, which has given them a lifeline, really. But they look the stronger team to me. I expect to come back and win second half. The second half started with this headshot from Samoa's lamb. Japan took advantage with another try. Lamjello was upgraded to a red. But despite that, Samoa came good with two tries. Mm -hmm. 
However, a couple of penalties from Japan kept them at arm's length and they ran out 28-22 winners. <laughs> As the lighthouse kept watch, I headed to bed. Good oh, morning. Well, last night was one of those nights where I just didn't get a lot of sleep. A mozzie got in at some point and was just buzzing around my head, bit me on my hands, painful enough to wake me up. Yeah, just never quite got back to sleep again after that. Windy and rainy again last night. It's a grey, dreary morning here in La Touquet. So I'm going to spend it in the van. Getting videos done, getting stuff edited, getting, getting work done. And then I'll show you around the rest of the town this afternoon. <laughs> So I showed you the town last night, but it also comes along with this somewhat dated seaside resort full of water parks, children's playgrounds and fun fairs. And I don't suppose that the England players will be using too much of those, but what they might be using is out there. And why use ice baths for recovery? And you've got the English Channel right here! Right, right. Well, that's me fully recovered. Back at the van, which I'm parked up here by this awesome estuary. And there's a couple of other things to note about Le Touquet and why England have based themselves here. Proximity, I would say is a key factor. So the training base is basically right next to the hotel in the middle of town there. I walked past there yesterday evening, all blocked off obviously, but there were people doing like pitch inspections. There was a dog on the pitch, you know, sniffing around and picking up any kind of bits left over or whatever. No stone, le stone left unturned, I'm sure. Not that there'll be any stones on a training pitch. Do you know what I mean? And the other thing is that over there is basically the end of the runway of the Lotu K airport and I'm assuming for the trips down to Marseille and to Nice for the group games and hopefully a quarter final they've been flying directly from there and it is close enough genuinely you could walk to it I'm sure they don't but you could so those are a few more things why Le Touquet is a great spot for England rugby now we've got the small matter of New Zealand versus Italy tonight which I am excited about I think this could be a real cracker yeah there's a few different ways this one could go and I'm, I'm excited for all eventualities so let's go into town and find that one now should be said in the balance of fairness look at that house it's pretty anyway as the night went on last night there were more and more younger folk out and enjoying the evening i certainly didn't feel the youngest anymore and a couple of nice bars as well which is good and a nightclub even which i didn't venture into but even having said all that i'm still i stand by the fact that it's very hard to get into trouble in this town i'd imagine okay let's go get some food i grabbed a pizza and watched some french sevens before finding some excitement by the casino <laughs> Maybe it's not such a quiet town after all. Casino celebrating 50 years tonight. There we go. Right, let's go watch this game. Holy smokes, I think somebody made the Kiwis angry. 96-17. I stopped recording tries after the sixth one because it just didn't seem worthwhile. 49-3 at half time. New Zealand were just absolutely ruthless. I mean, Italy were. I mean, they started with a lot of spirit and, and played some good phases. Didn't go anywhere, but they, you know, they tried. And then they just made bad decision after bad decision. And the Kiwis absolutely tore them to pieces. Scrum dominance in the end as well. They were just pushing Italy off their own ball time and time again. Winning two-handed lineouts against the throw again and again. It was 
It was an absolute schooling of the highest order. I don't know, but I can't imagine there's been a bigger margin of victory between two tier one nations. Very sad. I expect Italy really thought they had a, had a chance of winning and qualifying. I'm sure they did. I feel for them. They're one of my favorite teams. I love the way they try and play. Yeah, a shocker, absolute shocker for them. But that's it. And this is Le 2K. And uh, I'm off tomorrow back to Lille. And by the way, I found out what 2K means. So if you want to find out yourself, then make sure you subscribe and hit thumbs up down below so you don't miss the next episode because I'm going to tell you tomorrow morning. Peace.